Hey everyone, my name is Chris Acton with Acton Creative, and this is a handwoven experience. In this very first episode, I'm gonna talk about yarn, because what else would a weaver talk about? Yarn is one of my favorite things, hands down. So specifically, I'm gonna talk about the different format that yarn comes in, because not all yarn is created equal. So to kick things off, I thought I'd tell you a story. I am part of a foursome of ladies that have gotten together multiple times a year for over 10 years now. And one of our favorite things to do is to go to the yarn store. Two of the ladies are great crocheters, another one is just a fabulous knitter. So it makes sense that we would all love to go check out the local fibers. So uh, one of the first times we went to the yarn store, we walk in and Pam and Lisa and Lauren are all off checking out their latest project and the fiber they want to work with. And they come back to me, the weaver in the group, and ask, what do you have your eye on? And I was like, well, this isn't actually the best store for a weaver, ironically enough. And they're like, how is that possible? You've got, what, you know, a thousand square feet of wall-to-wall -wall yarn, floor to ceiling. How could you not find things that work for you? Well, I start the conversation about how a weaver is going to need yarn in a different format than a knitter or crocheter. And here's what that looks like. A knitter or crocheter typically might use a couple different formats. The first one being a ball of yarn. Looks like this, like your cat would play with. Ball of yarn, pretty standard, right? Or the other choice is a skein. Looks like this. And it's spelled S-K-E-I-N. Looks like skein, pronounced skein. But these are a couple great options that a knitter or crocheter might be working with because your project's gonna be smaller. You're making a pair of socks, a scarf, uh, a little shrug, something. These are perfect. Not a lot of yardage, a great variety of fibers. Uh, you can get a mix of just, the sky's the limit these days. It's so impressive what's out there. But these are a couple options for a knitter or a crocheter. For a weaver, we have got a couple things to consider instead. First of all, we need a lot more yardage than that. I would run through that skein of yarn in about 10 minutes setting up a project. So even a small project on a loom takes a lot of yardage. So that's the first thing we have to consider. The second thing we have to consider is that in the warp, which warp means the yarns that are under tension in the loom, that are tight, uh, those we have to be working with fibers that are gonna be really strong. Because some of those, some of the fibers that you might use for a pair of socks, once you pull on them really tight, they're gonna break, and we can't have that. It just doesn't make the weaving fun. Trust me on this. So as a weaver, instead of a ball or a skein, we're looking for things like a cone or a tube. So a tube looks like this. This is a carpet warp or um, a rug warp, it's called, it's cotton. But this is like a workhorse cotton. Uh, it's not the glamorous kind. But it's great under tension in a loom because it just hardly ever breaks. I would say never breaks, but never say never. It hardly ever breaks. Uh, so this comes in a half pound. So it's a lot of yarn to start with. Okay, so here's your tube. The other option is a cone. And this one I've already used a lot of, but this is what a cone looks like. Pretty self-explanatory, cone. But you could get cones that are a pound of yarn. So it's a lot of yarn. A lot to work with, especially as you're setting up your loom. You might have a couple of these going at the same time. Uh, it gives you um, gives you a lot. That's just exactly what you need as a weaver. So, if you are a beginning weaver and you're like, "This is all great, Chris, but where do I get weaving yarn if I can't go to my local knitting store?" So, I recommend first of all, always look locally. Your local weaving store needs your support more than anything, because there are a lot of weavers out there, so we have to stick together. So start local. If you live in a big city, uh, if you uh, are fortunate to be in a small city that has a weaving store, we're very lucky here in Chesterton to have Three Moons Fiberworks. They're a great weaving store, just moved in. But I'm also an hour out of Chicago, so I've got some weaving store options there. If you aren't so lucky to have those kind of choices there, of course the internet has everything. You can find any kind of yarn anywhere on the internet. But I would encourage you to do a couple things first. 
uh, talk to some other fellow weavers. And you're like, where do I find other fellow weavers? Weavers Guild. Pretty much wherever you are, I'm guessing there's one within an hour's drive. There's not a lot of them out there, but they're out there and they're a great resource. Talk to some other weavers, find out what kind of fibers they're using, where they're getting them, uh, what kind of things that they recommend. Shoot, you can send me a question. I'll give you some recommendations. No worries. If you have questions, just uh, pop me a note below and I'll be happy to help. Once you find some fibers that you really like, um, call a weaving store, even if it's not close. See if they'll deliver. If they don't, of course, use the World Wide Web. Uh, you can find anything there. So those are my thoughts on the different formats of yarn and how you can really get started finding some weaving yarn and getting into it. So if you liked this video, if you got something out of it, please like, comment, or share below. I would love to hear from you. Any questions, any comments, please, I'm all ears. If you want to see what's coming up next, I encourage you to subscribe and I'll be sure you are the first one to know when there's new information coming out. In the meantime, have a fabulous day and happy weaving.